in a PC jack. Today, I'm finally revisiting the Redux machine. This is a mini ITX rig featuring the Ryzen 5 5600X and the RTX 3060 Ti all inside the Coolmaster NR200. I've been meaning to do a follow-up video on this build for quite some time now and what I wanted to do today was some CPU validation to see what sort of performance we can get out of that 5600X in this small form factor setting. But the main focus of today is seeing what sort of performance we can get with PVO enabled in Ryzen Master and also getting our hands a little dirty and doing some manual overclocking to see if we can beat or even match PBO. Now, I've been gaming with this system for a couple of weeks now and the temperatures with the Noctua NHU-12S Redux have been really good so far, so I'm interested to see how much power this CPU cooler can actually handle. Now, I won't be delving too much into how I actually achieve any of the overclocks in today's video, but I will be doing a dedicated video where we look at overclocking both the CPU and the GPU and testing gaming performance specifically. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that when it comes out. A couple of things to address before we begin though. While you can't overclock Ryzen 5000 series, with how well Precision Boost Overdrive works out of the box with boosting that CPU as high as it can, there's often very little uplift to be gained over that with a manual overclock. And this can mean you can sometimes get better multi-threaded performance with an overclock, but you will miss out on single-threaded performance and see some degradation. And this can also come at a cost of higher temperatures and power consumption. So while I don't expect I'll keep any of the settings for this overclock we're going to try and figure out today, it's still useful to know in order for me to validate the actual quality of the 5600X that I received, and should indicate if it's been well binned or not. But either way, it should still make for an interesting experiment to see whether a manual overclock is actually able to beat PBO. In today's testing, I'll be using Cinebench R20 to validate our performance, and hopefully we should see some interesting results from both PBO and a manual overclock. Okay, so I've just finished testing with just PBO enabled in Ryzen Master. And with just that enabled, we're seeing so far 4,441 points for multi-core, and then we're also seeing 598 points for single core. And I've been using Hardware Info 64 just to monitor our stats for our CPU, and we were seeing 4.5 gigahertz across all six cores when we were doing the multi-threaded test. And on single threaded, we were seeing up to 4.6 gigahertz. Our highest temp was around 73C when we were under multi-core, and for 4.5 gigahertz, we were sitting around 1.3 to 1.325 volts and that was pulling 117 watts. So, so far it's looking pretty good with just PBO enabled, so I'm gonna jump in the BIOS and see if we can just match the current settings we were getting with PBO. And once we've seen that stable on its own, then we'll try and pump up that clock speed and see if there's any way of getting even higher. So I'm in the BIOS and I've just dialed in the overclock I'm gonna start out with. And it's basically matching the settings we were getting with PBO at first just to get a starting off point. As you can see, we've got 45 for our core ratio, and then I've just started out with 1.3 volts, which should be okay on that, as that was what we were matching with PBO. And the only other thing we've changed is that we've gone in and we've set our LLC to level three. So this should be a good starting out point. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back into the desktop and see if we're stable, and I'll catch up from there. So, with that all-core overclock of 4.5 GHz, we are actually stable in Cinebench R20 at the moment. And I've just been through both multi-core and single threaded test again. And we've gone up a little bit on multi-core, but not really a particularly amazing score compared to the first one. It was only about 6 or 7 points higher. Whereas on single threaded, as I expected, we've gone down to 577 from 598. Which, obviously, because we've dropped that clock speed from 4.6 to 4.5, which we were on for single threaded. We are gonna see some degradation but there for now, but at least we know this seems to be stable at the moment. So all I'm gonna do now is jump back into the BIOS and I'm gonna see if we can beat PVO with some of the settings I can dial in. And once I've got my final result, I will get back to you. Okay, so I think I've reached my final overclock for the 5600X so far. I've managed to achieve an overclock at 4.8 gigahertz at 1.325 volts. And we've got a multi-threaded score of 4705 points. And for single threaded, we've got up to 618 points. So for today, I have actually managed to beat PBO. And if we take a look at our stats for the CPU, we can see that we were hitting around 72.9C, which is pretty much what we were seeing within margin of what we had with PBO enabled. And much like PBO, we were pulling around 117 watts, which isn't too bad altogether. Like I said, I'm running 4.8 gigahertz at 1.325 volts. I did try and do it at 1.3 volts, but we did crash, so I had to bump it up a little bit. Now, there could potentially be some more performance on the table for this, but for now, like I said, we've beaten our original score, so I'm quite happy with that so far, so 
I think we'll call it a day on that. So, to round out this video, I'm quite pleased with that 4.8GHz all-core overclock. Now online I can see some people are getting 4.8GHz with a much lower voltage than what I've had today, but that is going to be down to the quality of the silicon that I've received with my 5600X. Now while this overclock is seeming to be stable in Cinebench R20, this could vary depending on the application that I try running it in. So if you were looking to do this kind of overclock, you would have to do some further validation in other applications, and particularly games as well, if that's what you're interested in. Now, I should say beforehand, I haven't gone into too much detail about how to actually overclock on your Ryzen 5 5600X, but if you are going to be doing it, just be wary that you will void your warranty, that's all. But if you stick within safe limits, then you should be okay, but make sure to do your research and fully understand what you're getting into. If you are interested in learning a bit more about how I achieved this overclock, I will be doing a follow-up video where I look at overclocking both the CPU and the GPU and see what sort of performance gains we can get in games, if any. In games, you could see particularly low uplifts, which obviously isn't ideal considering the increased power you are going to be driving into that CPU. But for today, I'm quite pleased with the results that I've had, and it gives me some further validation for what kind of quality 5600X that I've received. And also, it's given me quite a bit of insight into how much power this Noctua NH-U12S Redux can actually handle, with a 4.8GHz overclock across all six cores. For a budget cooler, I'd say that's pretty good going. I really enjoyed getting into some overclocking today, it's been quite some time since I've done some CPU overclocking, so hopefully I'll get to do a bit more very soon. So, that's it for today's video. Have you tried overclocking any Ryzen 5000 series CPUs yet? If you have, let me know how you got on in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thank you, I'll see you next time.